Look at this, all orange coming out of the tee today as the one and four balls desperate for a victory have Mississippi State in town for the first time in 12 years. Here comes Smokey. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate. And here come those Bulldogs, led by second year head coach Joe Moorhead. With Matt Stinchcomb, the College Football Hall of Famer, I'm Taylor Zarzer. Alyssa Lang is down on the field. You'll see her in just a second. Mississippi State with an awful start against Auburn, got their doors blown off on the Plains. Meanwhile, Tennessee, another big loss. This one at home to the Georgia Bulldogs. Both need to turn it around today. Hey, look at these programs licking their wounds, and they have to fix it pronto because when you look at the way this schedule lays out you're going to be facing the number one team and the number five team in the country in Alabama and LSU both of these programs desperate to rebound off of what otherwise were debilitating defeats the last time out they got to win in conference but more than anything else they have to believe that they're good enough for the balance of this season this is a confidence building game for the winner in this one and stench you got to have great quarterback play if you're going to turn it around Tennessee is turning to a true freshman for his second straight start in Brian Maurer. Says a lot when you turn to a true freshman, given that you had a veteran in Jarrett Garantano, but what they needed was the long ball. You had to hit some bombs, but when you talk with Jim Chaney, the offensive coordinator, Brian Maurer also was hitting the layups, the garden variety throws, the stuff that just has to get completed. The Garantano just wasn't getting done. He sparked that offense. It was for about two quarters worth of play, but it was enough for the balls to make the change to Brian Maurer at True Fresh. Well, and look at the difference between the first half and the second half. He came out like gangbusters. Tennessee was giving Georgia fits, but it didn't last for 60 minutes. And that's the charge for Jeremy Pruitt today. Meanwhile, for Mississippi State, it's been a two-headed monster so far this year. True freshman Garrett Schrader on the right. Tommy Stevens, the transfer from Penn State on the left. Who starts today? Joe Moorhead standing by with Alyssa. Coach, we saw both Garrett Schrader and Tommy Stevens getting some warm-up time in. What will your plan be for quarterback today? We're going to start with Tommy. Yes, ma'am. What do you hope to see from him today? No, uh, play like he was at the beginning of the season before he got hurt. Uh, execute the scheme with precision and, uh, you know, create some explosive plays. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Guys, also worth noting linebacker Willie Gay, who's been in and out due to suspension, will play again. The last time we saw him was against Kentucky, and he took one to the house early. We're going to wait a minute, Alyssa, to see him today because Mississippi State will get the football first. Tennessee won it, deferred Mississippi State to receive. You see Jeremy Pruitt's record 6-11 and in his second season. All orange uniforms today for Big Orange. Now, they've worn orange pants before Stinch, but this is the first time without a stripe in over 10 years. So Coach Pruitt told us on the field, let's mix it up a little bit. He shook it up, there's no doubt. Big Orange Country, Big Orange Unis, in a big game for both of these programs. Paxton Brooks has not allowed anyone to return one of his kicks this year. Dedrick Thomas and Brian Cole are back deep. And Thomas bobbles it and he's coming out. And he's down inside the 10. So Tommy Stevens in Mississippi State backed up near their own doorstep. Stevens has been banged up all year for the Bulldogs. And it has really hurt their ability to push the football downfield. The passing game in general, they have not been able to keep Tommy Stevens healthy. He is a dual threat. He can run the football. He has taken some shots, though, has only finished one game this season. That was the opener. Otherwise, he's been nicked up and left the other contests. Will they be able to keep him clean? Will he survive for four quarters? Hey, he hurt his ankle early in that Auburn game, has had some shoulder issues too. How quickly does he turn to Kylan Hill, one of the best tailbacks in the country? On the first play, makes a couple miss, but he's going nowhere. Loss of one. Here's the Mississippi State starting offense today. Stephen Gittry not starting in the lineup due to a coach's decision. I, Isaiah Zuber gets the start. They'll rely on that tailback, Kylan Hill. They got to get him going. They got to get him going in this game. They got to get him going early. Only 45 rushing yards last week versus Auburn. Stephen's first throw is a good one to Osiris Mitchell. Mitchell will gain a few up to the 14-yard line for six. 
It'll be third and five from there. Orange shirts and pants swarming to the football led by the true freshman, Henry Toa Toa. Well, so impressive to see such a young player contribute and produce at such a high level. And he's needed to for the fall defense that all over the football field should be very active versus Mississippi State's run offense. Now you see Mississippi State's numbers on third down. Tennessee has had all kinds of trouble getting off the field. Stevens in trouble. Can't escape. He goes down. Tennessee dialed up pressure. You got a question. You got a guy who has not played a ton of football this year, Tommy Stevens. So will he feel it? Does he have that clock? You see the second level pressure. It was Bryce Thompson coming in. He got there first. Stevens felt it. Looked like he was going to escape initially as he pushed up in the pocket. Instead, Ball's able to get him on the ground. Not a great pressure team setting the tone early defensively. Tucker Day from his own end zone. Marquez Calloway, one of the best in the country, will stand away from this one. And it'll bounce dead at Mississippi State's 46-yard line. Just a 35-yard punt. So Brian Maurer with terrific field position on his first drive of the game from Ocala, Florida. True freshman through for over 800 total yards in a loss in a high school game last year. Played in the Elite 11 quarterback competition and has been terrific with youngsters helping to help encourage children fighting cancer. Looked great the first half against Georgia. What does he do against the Mississippi State Bulldogs D today? Our under center drops back. Wide open punt. Dom Wood Anderson inside the 20. We were talking with Jeremy Pruitt during pregame. And he looks over and he says, we got to get our tight end going. This is number four. How about the first rattle out of the trap? See, Tennessee, we've seen them before. They're going to take a shot versus a defense in the secondary that has struggled. They struggled versus Auburn in that time already early with an explosive pass play downfield for the Tennessee offense. 28 yards trouble with the snap. Now we're pressured and will be out of bounds inside the 15. It's a pickup of five. Second start coming off the bench for Jared Garantano. 10 of 17, 205 yards and two touchdowns in that first half against Georgia. Offensive coordinator Jim Chaney says he's a gym rat. Can't get him out of the building. Well, he's also fearless. And he's young enough to not know everything. And in some ways, that's a good deal. First completion in Neyland Stadium, 73 yards. Touchdown to Callaway, and already with a big completion today. Inside handoff goes to Ty Chandler, and Ty plows ahead near the 12. It'll be third down. Starting lineup today for Tennessee. Sensational senior season for Jawan Jennings so far. And he just plays so well. He's such a competitor. You talk to any of these coaches, and he's one of those guys where he's not going to run away from many. But he's big, he's physical, he makes those competitive catches when they're contested. This is where he makes his money. This is red zone, key downs, and on third downs, it makes all the sense in the world to look to number 15. He's looking that way. Into the end zone, double coverage intercepted. Picked off by Mississippi State's Cam Dantzler. That's the, what you take with a true freshman. He's fearless. Sometimes you throw it where it doesn't belong. The 22nd game in a row for Mississippi State in a turnover. Welcome back to SEC Network College Football presented by Allstate. In the pregame, one of the best cornerbacks ever in college football, Terrell Buckley from Florida State. He coaches the cornerbacks for Mississippi State now. He was working on this exact type of situation. Well, he knows that his secondary is going to have to play physically. Look at this. I mean, it's uncanny what they were talking about. A great job by Cam Dantzler 
of high pointing that football. You're facing against a tall, long wide receiving core for Tennessee. Well played by Dancer. Bad decision by the true freshman in Mount. Bulldogs back on offense, and Kylan Hill goes straight ahead for a couple. Kylan leads the SEC in rushing, averaging 119 rushing yards per game. That's 23 more than the next best tailback, Kareem Bo Rakeem Boyd at Arkansas. He's just so physical. He's one of those guys where he's quick enough, fast enough to get into the open field. You better bring a friend if you're going to get him to the ground. He breaks a ton of tackles. That's Matthew Butler with the sack. And Stevens has got to unload this football. We've already seen a sack on the previous third down, but here he's got time enough. Had a running on a crossing route. Could have unloaded it, and he didn't. You have to wonder the amount of time, the amount of game reps that Tommy Stevens has missed. Is it messing with his clock in his head, the timing of his throws? Get that football out of your hands. Don't take the negative yardage plays. And these are the third down distances that Joe Moore had said we have to avoid. Stevens, a laser, but it's incomplete. He's trying to sneak it in there to Isaiah Zuber. It's fourth down. So Stevens is staying in there in the pocket. He ran around like crazy when he played at Penn State as the change of pace quarterback for Trace McSorley. Coach Moorhead said today, Garrett Schrader is the runner and Stevens is the passer. Yeah, and partly I think what we've seen is, is that Schrader, obviously, as early as he is in his career, that's where he's made his plays with his legs. Stevens more advanced in the passing game, but a very inauspicious start for the Bulldogs. Almost blocked. Day gets off a bullet, and it takes Callaway all the way back inside his 30. And he's out of bounds near the 40-yard line. That is a 56-yard punt. Mississippi State on offense has been a disaster in the last few first quarters. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. Before Neyland Stadium, there was Waite Field, first athletic field on the Tennessee campus, named for the longtime professor here, Charles Waite, completed in 1908. First game, Vols beat the Tar Heels 12-0. 2,000 people in attendance there. Served as the field until 1920. Had a great dedication on that earlier this week. So the Vols with terrific field position again, but had an empty drive the first time as Brian Maurer forced one to the end zone into double coverage where Cam Dantzler picked it off. Straight ahead, Ty Chandler, and he will get a couple. Leo Lewis on the tackle. Still have not seen Willie Gay yet. He is playing, as Alyssa said, in this game today. Of course, the first play of the season for Gay against Kentucky was a pick six a few weeks ago. Came in on the fourth play of the game, snuck into the lineup. Boy, made his presence felt immediately. He is the best defender on Mississippi State's roster. We will see him eventually today. Lewis, though, right now, manning his linebacking spot. Jordan flying right at that Bulldogs defensive front for two more. It's third down and six. Tennessee needs to establish the ground game. I think they're searching for which tailback is their best? You know, Tim Jordan had a good outing versus Georgia last week. Nine carries, 47 yards, and you can see on those two runs, Jim Chaney trying to get downhill. He talked about that. It opens up the passing game and play action, and Willie Gay now on the field for this third down. A third and six in stride to Tyler Bird, and Bird's in inside the 40. That's his first catch of the season. It goes for 16 yards. Mississippi State brought both linebackers. 
Errol Thompson and Willie Gay coming on the blitz. Maurer stabs a slant in right over their heads. Tyler Bird gets across, and that's one of those layup throws that Jim Chaney was talking about. When you got receivers running open, hit them in stride. First, you got to find them. Then you got to pull the trigger and put it on his numbers. And it's Chandler. And Ty goes inside the 40 for a couple of couple more yards. Mississippi State defensive line led by Lee Autry, Marquis Spencer, Fabian Lovett, and Chauncey Rivers. What kind of pressure can they get? against the Tennessee offensive line that's made a lot of changes this season. Well, it, it won't be for a lack of trying because of the eight snaps we've seen, Mississippi State's brought pressure on four. They're not scared to shoot their gun out there. The issue is if you can pick it up, if that quarterback sees it, there's always a deficiency somewhere, especially in the secondary. You are borrowing from your coverage. Straight ahead to Jordan, and Jordan might have gotten a yard. It'll be third down and long. Bob Shoup, a former defensive coordinator at Tennessee, is now the D.C. at Mississippi State, and he comes after you almost every play. And you can see it, you know, and it's borne out already in this game. 48% of the time, you're going to see pressure versus Mississippi State. The issue is, do they always get, always get home? Do you get the effect? Only pressure effectively 29% of the time, even though they're blitzing 50% of the time. On the third and eight, Maurer, a strike again. It's Josh Palmer, and Palmer is to the 22-yard line. Let's get our first update today. Back to the studio. Here's Peter Burns. Thank you, Taylor. All right, Texas OU week seven. You don't kick field goals in the Big 12, right? Fourth down, Jalen Hurts finds C.C. Lamb. Seven-nothing Sooners over the Longhorns. Burns, I want to know the heart rate of Dari Noka throughout today's updates. Of course, a proud... OU alum <laughs> yeah. watching that one before he takes over for you later today. Oklahoma 7, Texas nothing. Balls on a 16 yard pass play to Josh Palmer are back in the red zone again as Jordan gets him down to the 15 yard line. A great job that time by Tennessee capturing the edge right away. Dom Woods Anderson, Austin Pope sealing the edge cleanly. Mississippi State gave up contain. Did a great job of getting outside and downhill quickly. Took Harold Thompson to get on it. The problem is, is once they get inside the 20, they're kicking field goals or they're throwing interceptions. Just eight touchdowns this year in 17 red zone trips. That's what we just saw on the previous possession. Second and three. Jordan changes that. Touchdown, Tennessee. Fifteen-yard touchdown run for Tim Jordan's only the fourth rushing touchdown for the Vols this season. Brent Samaglia, best kickers in America. Seven nothing, Tennessee. Timmy Jordan hammering it into the end zone. The fifth different. Offensive lineup for that offensive line, and they're opening up big holes on the ground, and the balls are up seven. Guys, after that last Tennessee touchdown, quarterback Brian Mauer came over to the bench and he yelled a big let's go. He sat down with quarterback coach Coach Winky, who was very complimentary about his awareness on that last drive. And then his senior wide receivers came over and they were patting him on the shoulders. That offense got a lot of swagger right now, something that the coaching staff was really excited about the energy that Brian Mauer could bring to this offense. Here's Jared Garantano locked in to trying to support him as best he can. Mississippi State will get the ball at the 25. What was different about that drive? Well, the difference here, what you'll see is these defensive linemen are going to rock this way. The linebacker is going to work the opposite direction. You end up almost like a scissor. You end up right up the gap. Great job by Darnell Wright. Great job inside.
by Ryan Johnson, who's playing right guard for the unavailable Riley Locklear. We talked about earlier, the new offensive front, yet again, they're doing an excellent job reshuffling guys, young players up front, two true freshmen at top. Mississippi State get anything going on offense. Stevens will throw it, and it's caught. It's a catch made there by Osiris Mitchell for five yards. How about the start against Auburn? Historically bad. Losing 19 yards on the first drive. Auburn's first play was run from the Mississippi State 30. Whitlow touchdown. It kept going all the way through a fumble on the third drive that led to an Auburn score. It was 21-0, Joe Moorhead said, before the band got in their seats. Yes, it was, could not have started worse for Mississippi State. And then, of course, offensively, they ended up losing Tommy Stevens. Didn't even finish the second offensive possession versus the Tigers. yards before Stevens takes off and gets about four. It'll be third and short. This is the element that they have to have in their offense, the QB run game. We haven't seen Stevens keep it on a design run yet. You see, I wonder now is Darrell Williams. Yeah. Standout guard, made the move to center. They call him the general. He runs the show up front for the Mississippi State offensive line. And hard to tell if that's a lower body injury if he's working on his hand. Looks like a snap hand. One of the best in college football down on the field for the Bulldogs. So Daryl Williams has helped off the field, the center for Mississippi State. That's Evans Wilkerson, middle of your picture. Senior from Ridgeland, Mississippi. They will now be snapping the football back to Tommy Stevens. They've had some issues with injuries on their offensive line. In fact, James Jackson, one of their defensive linemen, has played some center so far this year. Can Wilkerson apply some pressure on a third and a foot? Fakes the hill, wide open to Farad Green. First down, Bulldogs. Huge conversion, obviously, but look at the end of this play. So Darrell Williams is in there. He's just trying to finish off the play. Now watch his hand. His hand's gonna come down right now, here at the end. See him put his hand out? Watch him get his foot, his hand stepped on, right there. Walked on over. Get your hand stepped on real quick. See if he returns to this contest. That's his snap hand, as I mentioned. Where's the glove on the other hand? First and 10 Bulldogs at their own 43. It's strike to Osiris Mitchell into volunteer territory and another Bulldogs first down. Osiris Mitchell coming into this game, 19 catches, 14 of them had gone for first downs. So he is, to this Mississippi State passing offense, in many ways, what Jawan Jennings is on third downs to Tennessee. He is the go-to guy for big conversions. Easy to think he didn't play high school football, and now he's Mississippi State's best receiver in his third season in Starkville. Nick Gibson, backup tailback to Kylan Hill, plows ahead down to the 41. Let's go down to Alyssa. Yeah, guys, I'm standing on the Mississippi State sideline right now. Darrell Williams went into the injury tent for, gosh, no more than 30 seconds, came right back out and started snapping the ball to a trainer. They said just a little stinger on his hand. He's okay. He's ready to come back in. Yeah, about three or four stingers in the shape of a cleat. <laughs> I know you've lived it. Probably some memories that you didn't enjoy in your collegiate experience. Part of the game happens all the time. <laughs> Second and seven. Stevens, he takes off and he's inside the 35 and another Bulldogs first down. Another QB design run, this time a draw. They did an excellent job of fitting up because whenever you've got just that one back in the backfield, even if they've got six defenders in the box, that back becomes a blocker. So you have a blocker for all of those defenders in the box. And Stevens, he does a pretty solid job of finding the openings. That's partly why this offensive possession has sparked the QB run element being introduced. He's the ultimate H-back 
when he was playing for Joe Moorhead and James Franklin at Penn State. He throws one too strong, and it's picked off. It's Kenneth George tackled near the 35-yard line. Turns out Kenneth George's hands are as important as his feet, as we saw earlier. Trying to fit it right here, and he had it. Watch now, right now, shook him. Ball's gonna come out, off target, gotta drop it in there better. Stevens, much like Schrader, versus Auburn, overthrows an open receiver. That ball's too high to handle for Dedrick Thomas. Second turnover in this game, this time against the Bulldogs as they stage their best offensive drive of the game. Quick throw, incomplete. Probably not the worst thing in the world that Josh Palmer couldn't handle that ball. Not sure that was a forward pass. It appeared to be at first glance. Second down. And Maurer, I think highly aware of edge pressure, especially after the shot he took last week versus Georgia. Ended up resulting in a fumble scoop and score, but a wicked hit. And there's no doubt, Jim Chaney mentioned, he has been schooled up. Feel that edge pressure, diagnose, and unload that football in advance. Freshman Eric Gray, again, one of those inside reads that takes Tennessee up near the 39-yard line for a pickup of about four. Gray, the freshman from Memphis, Tennessee, the three-time Mr. Football in Tennessee. He's a guy that we were talking to the coaches yesterday, and Gray, he's got some great wiggle. He's got to break more tackles. Jeremy Pruitt lamenting his ability to run after contact. Solid carry there, but a third and five for Maurer. He's been relatively good so far in getting his conversions. This one's complete, but it's short as it's caught by Bird, but he's tackled four yards shy of a first down. State forces a three and out. Juwan Jennings ended up double covered, bracketed on a slam. Looks like Maurer was looking to get it into 15, came off and got to Bird, but with not enough. Looks like we'll survive the first quarter with just the one touchdown for Mississippi State defensively. Some miscues from both quarterbacks throwing interceptions in the first quarter. The difference, a Tim Jordan touchdown run. Balls on top as we head to the second. History of college football celebrated here in Knoxville. Johnny Majors and the 1989 balls being celebrated out in the field. They went 11 and 1 that year, finished fifth in the final ranking, won the Cotton Bowl against the Arkansas Razorbacks. Always great to see Coach Majors. Balls punting to start the second quarter. Malik Deer will run away from that punt, takes a good bounce for Joe Doyle. Mark dead inside the 10. That's a 52 yard punt. Academy Sports and Outdoors is making it even easier on you with in store pickup. It's all new and basically means you go to academy.com, order whatever you need, and come get it in store. Get in, get out, back to having fun with your family. Bulldogs have been relying on running the football with their tailback, Kylan Hill and their quarterbacks so far this season. That passing game has been an issue, and you saw the interception on the last time they were on the field, as Stevens will get another crack at it from his own eight-yard line. Take the hill. This time it's a strike, and it's up near the 24-yard line. As Steven Gittry, who did not start the game due to a coach's decision, Get 16 yards. We got to get him going too. He didn't play versus Kentucky at all. 
another element in the passing game. That's what it's supposed to look like in the Joe Moorhead offense. RPO game, stab it in there when the linebackers check up versus the run. Stevens rolls out, throws on the run. That's a dangerous pass. It's incomplete. Another studio update. Here's PB. Thank you, Taylor. Feel like we got a fun one today. Between the hedges, after a couple big third down conversions, Ryan Holinsky finds Brian Edwards, 46 yard touchdown. First lead Gamecocks had uh, over Georgia since 2014. It's early, early in Athens. But they've struggled to get going in the first quarters of games this they season. They really have. They start games incredibly slowly. Seems to be the case again today versus the Gamecocks. He had the lead on the most of the first half last week. And Kylan Hill has no place to go against that ball defense. It's second down. Melissa Lang is a graduate of the University of South Carolina. You want to stop the game right now, Alyssa? Yeah, I mean, I'd be totally fine with that. I think Stinch would be too, right, Stinch? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> Meanwhile, third and ten. For the Tennessee Vols and those orange jerseys and britches today. Against the all white with some maroon numbers of Mississippi State. Another third and long for Mississippi State, losing on first and second down. Blitz picked up by the Bulldogs. First down throw past the 40 yard line, and it's Gidry again. We talked about Gidry needing to step up. And he has now that he's entered the game right here on the left side and ends up being the ultimate target. He dropped by Stevens, go right over the umpire's head, get Gidry in the soft spot over the middle. Two catches, 36 yards. Hill breaks a few tackles and gets to the sideline. Kylan hasn't done much so far today. That's his fourth carry. And hasn't broken one yet in the leading rusher in the Southeastern Conference. He does such a good job of running out of tackles. The problem is you don't want that happening in your own offensive backfield. And Tennessee so far in this game has done an excellent job of getting upfield along their defensive front, forcing Kylan Hill to break tackle, tackles and break moves in his own offensive backfield. Not good. Well, turn Stevens into a passer. He's made him pay a couple of times on this drive. This time he shows off his running ability and he runs past the 45 down to the 43. It's another Mississippi State first down. This is the element that he brings, there's no doubt. The fact that he can tuck it and run it. And on this one, of course, it was just to extend the play, nowhere to go with the football, tuck it, pick up the first down, move the chains. Another makings of a good drive for Mississippi State. Now back-to-back -back possessions for the Bulldogs after a really stilted start offensively. Hill looks like he was a bit banged up yeah. on that last run. Nick Gibson in the game. Instead, it's a jet sweep to Isaiah Zuber. K-State transfers inside the 40. Yeah, when Hill left the game, it looked like he was a little bit gimpy there on the sidelines. He'll run out of a tackle or two, and as you get a ball to Zuber, try to stretch the defense sideline to sideline, make him play the width of the football field. See if you can't get some of those eyes out of the field, out of the backfield where Kylan Hill has now returned. For a four-yard pickup for Zuber. Hill will stand next to Stevens. No Garrett Schrader yet. Hill plows ahead to the 37. Just a couple more. Tennessee taking him away in the first half. But a productive run. One to make it third and more manageable. Get out of those third and tens and ten plus. Regardless, Stevens able to convert on the previous third down. You wonder. If you're Joe Moorhead, are you thinking two down territory right here? Keep this ball on the ground, pick up some more yards, and see if you can't set up a fourth and short. 
Evans looks over to Coach Joe. Three on the play clock. Does get it off. And he gets the first down. Back to the studio, another update with Peter Burns. In, indeed, Taylor, you were right. It's early in Athens after the Gamecocks took their first lead of that series since 2014. Dogs answered. Nine plays, 75 yards. DeAndre Swift touchdown, 10-7 dogs. Swift is one of the best tailbacks in the country. And it's interesting, Jeremy Pruitt, we see Joe Moorhead who coaches Kylan Hill. Jeremy Pruitt said he thinks that this guy, number eight for Mississippi State, might be every bit as good. Well, the hard part is he doesn't have that passing game to complement it. The different, different offensive front as well, but certainly incredibly talented. He hasn't gotten much yet, though. It's his sixth carry, and he's only got 10 yards. You know, he's a guy that... You see Gary Schrader, Schrader, uh, Schrader copter from earlier this season. We'll talk more about that coming up uh, a little bit later on in the game as uh, I think that play has gone viral across college football. It certainly has, but what's interesting is that Kylan Hill, top rusher in the conference, but in the game where Garrett Schrader had to enter the game, Schrader ended up being the leading rusher, showing that those defenses have been keying on Kylan Hill. It's 11th play of the drive that started on Mississippi State's own eight. Not sure he's going to get this one off. They give it to him. And he goes down. Sacked again, and this time it's Bryce Thompson on another corner blitz. They brought him on a blitz on the very first possession, and he got home this time. Looked like Thompson was in the neutral zone. He jumped it a little bit early. Watch him. Surprised that he wasn't in the neutral zone when that ball was snapped. Regardless, you know, we talk about Brian Maurer having to feel that perimeter pressure, especially to your right side as a right-handed quarterback. That time, Thompson right on top of it. Three sacks, four tackles for loss for Tennessee. Well, we talked about it. Third and manageable. Now, once again, third and 10 plus. At the feet of Gidry, they say incomplete. Talked about Kidry earlier. Had a couple of catches early in this possession. It definitely looked like that ball skimmed the turf. It was almost an amazing catch, right? You talk about it right off your shoelaces, but definitely one hop off the field here at Neyland Stadium. And Coach Moorhead on this fourth and long, fourth and 12 from his Tennessee 33 is going to call timeout, try to figure out what he wants to do. Number 47 for Mississippi State, Jace Grisman has kicked three 47-yard field goals. This one, though, is a 51-yard attempt. A little bit of breeze down there on the field. Kind of a swirling wind. Looks like it might be helping him at the moment, but this would be a career long by four yards. Junior from Houston, Texas. Does it have enough leg? Hits the crossbar and in. Well, we talked about in the open. Tennessee's quarterback needed to hit layups and bombs. Well, Mississippi State needed their kicker to hit a bank shot. Bulldogs on the board here on Rocky Top. Jace Grisman, maybe a little gust from the gods. We're home, Romeo. <laughs> Hits the crossbar. Wow. And in. Bulldogs on the board. The junior from Houston, Texas, is career long, 51 yards. From a distance standpoint, you can't shave it any closer than that. Got a good bounce. Scott Goodman 
With a short kick, trying to kick away from those Tennessee star return men. And Chandler just runs out of bounds. That worked out perfectly. More college football coming up today on SEC Network. At 4, it's Vandy and UNLV in our Saturday night matchup at 7.30 Eastern. It's Arkansas against Kentucky, both coming off of five first meeting since 2012. I want to see what happens at quarterback tonight for the Cats. Do we see Lynn Bowden line up there? You have to think so, right? Given what Sawyer Smith and the way he performed, clearly injured, you have to think that they made a change at quarterback. Lynn Bowden Jr., a high school quarterback, a do-it-all type of a talent. Seems like half the teams in the league right now are wondering who their quarterback would be week to week. Same would apply with these two teams. Brian Maurer hands to Ty Chandler, and he's up near the 18-yard line. First, you have Brian Maurer, of course, coming in for Jarrett Garantano. Then it's the Kentucky Wildcats. Sawyer Smith came in after that gruesome Wilson injury. You might see Bowden tonight. Felipe got hurt against Kentucky. Trask has taken over. First road start tonight against LSU. Bentley got hurt against the Tar Heels. Ryan Helinski has started since. Riley Neal is still starting, but we might see Deuce Wallace tonight. Of course, Kelly Bryant had a heck of a star scare last week. He's okay to play, and Jake Fromm, he's the only steady guy that you know you're gonna get on a week-by-week -week basis. Chandler again just past the 20. Yeah, they're, they're an endangered species this year. And you look at that, there's a lot of snaps that went away. You look at Jake Bentley, the most experienced quarterback returning, especially in the SEC East, but across the entire conference, out week one. And Jared Garantano, among the more veteran signal callers in this conference going into the season. And of course, they've made a decision to change him out for Brian Howard. I think all of us breathe a huge sigh of relief knowing that Kelly Bryant is okay yes. after that hit last week. Howard will step up on a third and four and take off. Spinning past the 40, first down, Tennessee. Mississippi State was in a bare defense. See this, three bigs right in the middle. To get a little bit of pressure right off the edge, and Maurer, we talked about it. Yeah, he made some throws. But coming into the season, we had Tennessee versus UT Chattanooga. Maurer was a runner, and he was the guy, yeah, he was fearless, but he could hurt you with his legs, and he just did right there on the scramble. 23-yard gain for the true freshman. This is a backwards pass, meaning Jennings could turn into a quarterback. Instead, Jawan takes off. And it's a first down as the senior from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, gains 21. Back to what you said about Maurer. Jeremy Pruitt on the field before that game against UT Chattanooga was trying to determine if JT Shroud or Maurer would be the second quarterback that played that day. And he looked at you and said, Maurer's a better runner. I think I need to give him a shot first. And that's how Maurer became the second string quarterback and eventually the starter. And you could see that he's brought some juice to this offense. You see Tennessee in that formation into the boundary. Tim Jordan. Well, at the 31-yard line, just a pickup of a couple. C.J. Morgan, the Mississippi State leading tackler, was there. Second down. A couple snaps in a row now. One was on the double pass. Juwan Jennings just tucked and ran. But where Tennessee goes, an overload formation. They're not moving any offensive linemen, but they're putting a heavy formation to the right side into the boundary, trying to take Mississippi State out of some of their pressure looks, and making their defense adjust to the extra pass. Bauer keeps it, runs inside the 20. Huge hit as he hits the ground. The ball was on the ground. It's not a fumble. It's a 13 yard run for the true freshman. Man, I don't know if they've got a chiropractor on staff here at Tennessee. Look at this play. We had the Schrader copter by Mississippi State's quarterback. What is this, the spike? The Meyer head plant. Look at this. He goes up, gets upended, and lands face first. Self-inflicted pile driver is never good. 
DDT himself popped right back up. Jim Cheney opening the playbook on this drive as Jordan might have gotten half a yard. Jim Cheney talked about it. So look, we're just trying to get this kid to play a little bit more discipline, but we liked enough what we saw out of Maurer. We just have to make sure that we can put him in positions where he can succeed. He's not scared. Fearless football player. The issue is you got to be able to rein that in. And what you don't want is a reckless quarterback. He's been able to do that by and large since he's been under center. Chandler, not much, maybe a yard. You know, Cheney's made 11 moves as an assistant coach in his career. I was asking about going to Tennessee, to Georgia, back to Tennessee. He said, Taylor, I'm a wandering gypsy. <laughs> he said, I don't get comfortable after a few years, but Knoxville is very special to him. His daughter, Elizabeth, graduated from Tennessee as a couple of daughters here in town, emptying the playbook on this drive. This is the ninth play, and all of them have been runs for the balls. Do they throw it here? We talked about it early, it ended up being an interception, but Jennings in the slot, number 15. 39 to the end zone, it's a pick off again. Mauer forces the issue, and Brian Cole makes him pay. Two huge red zone takeaways by the Mississippi State defense, and Jeremy Pruitt, a high school quarterback himself, getting in the ear of his true freshman. Hey, man, we want you to shoot it. We want you to hit our guys. Don't be throwing it to the opposition. Mississippi State survives. Bunch of ball hawkers from Stark Vegas. 16 takeaways on the season. I'll tell you what impressed me most was two weeks ago, Matt, three forced fumbles when they're getting blown out against Auburn, still fighting for the football. They lead the country in forced fumbles and recoveries with 10 coming into this game, but it's been interceptions that have kept Tennessee out of the end zone. You can see we talk about Jennings. Well, here's Jennings and here's Palmer. So you're going to have two options as Mara rolls to his right. He ends up getting flushed. So he's got two downfield, but see the safety check up on Jennings? And when he does, it made Mara think, you know what, I got Palmer. One on one in the back of the end zone. He's throwing across his body, though. Didn't get enough on that throw. Ends up in a turnover. That's what Tommy Stevens does best as he slides awkwardly into the bench. There is a flag down. A relatively clean game up until now. No flags. First one. Yeah, we haven't heard from John McDay, today's referee, yet. John's crews have officiated national championship games in the past few years. One of the best in the business. Holding. Holding. On the defense, number eight, against an eligible receiver. Ten-yard penalty will result in a first down. Jordan Allen is a backup linebacker, but I believe they got the number incorrect. As Jeremy Pruitt says, we don't have an eight. Yep. Can read his lips, we don't have an eight out there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's got to be Elante Taylor, I think, on this call. He's got the number wrong. Watch, watch Taylor right here. See him spin, he end up spinning. Maybe the confusion was as Taylor was holding an eight. That's exactly what it was. Who is Kylan Hill? Kylan Hill out of the backfield. Dante Taylor comes up, spins Hill completely around. Everybody's all been out of shape. But there's definitely a penalty, but identification was messed up. State at their own 43. Stevens on the toss to Hill. And Tennessee's defense has been swarming today. It's a loss of one as Taylor is right there. Taylor was holding Hill before he was an eligible receiver. Ends up holding Hill this time as a runner on the speed option. Great job of defeating the block right away. Marco 
Cyrus Mitchell got started early. False start on the offense. Not all 11 players were set prior to the snap. This is a five-yard penalty, second down. They still weren't sorted on that side of the formation. They had the three receivers to the right side. They were still getting aligned. When Tommy Stevens called for the snap. Just going backwards now. You dig a hole, another tackle for loss set up by Alante Taylor. And then a procedure issue. Enforces it again. That's his second interception. Throws it right to Trayvon Flowers inside the 40 yard line. That throw was never there. And Trayvon Flowers. And Flowers watching the quarterback all the way. His safety spot, he's in there for Theo Jackson. Comes up, and yet another turnover in this game. The quarterback's throwing it to the wrong color. Peter, you never start with a circle in the middle. What's Doring doing there? Garantano's in. Brian Maurer is in the tent. So Jared, who started 17 straight games in all 12 last year, benched midway through the Florida game, comes off the bench again, ending to Chandler, maybe a yard. Well, it looked like Maurer kind of bounced up after his run. Landed face first. Looked like he could have injured his neck. I don't know if it's owing to that, but Garantano, who was the starter, as we mentioned, coming into the season, but just had so many issues, not only hitting the shots downfield, but throws that needed to be made. Open receivers, swing passes. It just couldn't put the ball where it needed to go. Now let's, to, let's look at today's All-State Mayhem moment seen a bunch of interceptions in this first half two from each of the starting quarterbacks well Maurer has certainly hurt his team two interceptions in the end zone as Tennessee was going in driving the football and of course Tommy Stevens has returned the favor as well Tano back to the ground and it's Chandler again Tennessee does have two timeouts Quickly, they get to the line here. They do. They call timeout. 47 seconds left in the half. They've got one left. See Jeremy Pruitt want to get a face mask call, trying to pick up a couple extra yards at the end of that one. Clean tackle. Brian Tano, second in school history, with 62% completion percentage. I don't know if it was clean. We're looking at CJ Morgan. Leading tackler for Mississippi State, but was it a clean one? Doesn't have to be the actual face mask. It's any helmet opening. It certainly looked like he had a, a handful of Chandler's headgear. So Jeremy Pruitt is observing calmly to the official. Garantino's accuracy. Least amount of interceptions thrown in the country of all quarterbacks that started every game last year. I think he would have to throw the ball here on a third and five. And where we've seen protection break down, although you can see a run formation from Tennessee here, not as good of a runner. Up to the ground again and tripping is Chandler. He might have lost a yard. See, clearly, you know, with that run call, obviously you want to get the conversion, but can you inch ahead? Make it more manageable for Samaglia. Instead, the slip, the wheel and turf. Taking him down as he goes straight to the, as he headed towards the line of scrimmage. Jeremy Pruitt's gonna run it down as far as he can. Run it down and give Brent Samaglia a chance to increase the lead. 
Coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of the Pride of the Southland on SEC Network Plus. You can start streaming now on the ESPN app. Saturdays in the South did a big feature on them last week and how Rocky Top arguably is the most famous fight song in all of college football. So Maglia has nailed two 51-yard field goals in his career, has won this season the BYU Cougars in week two. I tell you, when you look at it, the play calling, obviously Garantano being forced in there. Maurer injured, and left the game, has been in the evaluation tent. Three straight runs for your former starter in their quarterback. 49. First Joe Moorhead will try to ice him. Speaking of icy, this cooler conditions here in Knoxville finally feels like fall weather. We've had temperatures north of 90 degrees every single week in the deep south. They're waiting half a month longer than we should have. It's not the way it's supposed to work, man. We're not supposed to be sweating like this. Especially we're not even wearing pads or helmets. <laughs> the orange blankets out today. 55 degrees here on Rocky Top. Two interceptions. You could argue Tennessee's lead could be larger than this. Oh, yeah. Just to make it a seven point game at the half. Maglia right through the middle. 10 3 Tennessee after two. Right when you thought that maybe it could have gone worse there towards the end, slip it down, couldn't eke it any closer, and instead Samaglia makes it right. <laughs> Just shy of a bank shot. Tennessee receives the second half kickoff. Alyssa Langs with Jeremy Pruitt. Coach, what's the status of Brian Maurer right now? Well, they're checking him out. I don't know. We'll see when we get inside. How would you evaluate the way your defense has been able to play in this first half? Well, we've got a couple of turnovers. It's been good. We gave up one play on third down, but I think um, it's probably been one of the better halves we played. Thank you, Coach. Hard to argue with that as they limited Kylan Hill to just 12 rushing yards in the first half. Now we're walking off. His team up 10 to 3. Let's send you to the halftime report with PB, Chris Doring, and Gene Chizik. Megan Taylor, Chris Doring, Gene Chizik, and it is I. Welcome back to SEC Network College Football presented by Allstate. On the banks of the Tennessee River, the Vols lead Mississippi State 10 to 3 as we start the third quarter. Let's see who's winning with style today. Brought to you by Belk. Well, what was interesting in that first half were the red zone takeaways. And you can see Marquez Callaway, he just kind of checks up. And because he does, it allows Cameron Dantzler to sink. And he ends up making this pick, trying to get the ball into Jawan Jennings. This is early in the first half. Set the tone for Mississippi State. And then once again, another turnover. Now this time, Maurer flushes for no reason. But he sees the safety. The safety's going to jump Jawan Jennings' route underneath. That's going to open up Palmer's route on the back end of the end zone. The problem is, by then, Maurer had already flushed out. He's throwing on the run, near enough on this throw, throwing across his body, hangs up. Ryan Cole ends up with the interception. Two empty red zone possessions for Tennessee. That's the difference in this game so far. Struggling starting quarterbacks and Tennessee has limited Kylan Hill defensively. Tennessee has been terrific forcing a few sacks and five tackles for loss and they'll get the football first at the 25. Could see some backups at quarterback in the second half, Alyssa. Yeah, guys, I just caught up with Mississippi State head coach Joe Moorhead. He said he will go with Garrett Schrader in the second half. I asked why, and he said it comes down to turnovers. This is a passing game, and they can't be turning the ball over in the air. So you will see Schrader for the Bulldogs. As for Brian Maurer, he is out with an undisclosed injury, so it'll be Garantano here going forward. 
wondering if it happened on this play, Alyssa, as Maurer did stay in the game after that, but did go into the tent and, as you said, into the locker room. So Jared Garantano, who hasn't turned the football yet, has handed it off to his tailbacks, and he keeps it going in the second half. That's Tim Jordan for six. That's interesting. You look at this, and right when Tennessee thinks that they figured out that they got an answer at quarterback with Brian Maurer, and he gets injured. And it was right before that final possession that ended up resulting in a Samaglia field goal on the ensuing offensive possession. But Tennessee ran the football three straight times, kicks that field goal. Now you're back to your original starter. You open the season. But he threw it once in the entire quarter, and that was the interception. She just diagram. Bill on the ground, and Jordan is bottled up in the backfield, losing yardage on that play as Errol Thompson came in. It's the first negative yardage play the Mississippi State defense has been able to generate all game long. First time that they've been able to push Tennessee back on an offensive snap. And now we saw a third and five, third and medium, right before Samaglia's field goal attempt. You have to go to the air here with Garantano. Here comes his first attempt of the game. Instead, again to the ground, and right near the marker, looks like half a yard shy, is Chandler. The flag is going to come in as we had some extracurricular activity there. Marquez Calloway and Errol Thompson. First glance, it looks like the ball is about six inches shy of the yards to gain. Mississippi State heated it up a little bit on that one. Eventually, Garantano's going to have to air it out. is a first down. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct at number 15 of the offense, unsportsmanlike conduct at number eight of the defense. This is the first unsportsmanlike conduct foul for each player in the game. It is a first down, as they did give... Line by rule, first down. And they did give Chandler the 35-yard line. So they end up handing it off to Chandler. And yeah, he gets it. Because he's rolling over the top of Chauncey Rivers right as they reached the yard line to get to. So Gary to Tom Wood Anderson, and he gets six yards up to the 40-yard line now. These personal foul calls came into play when Mississippi State was playing Kentucky because Willie Gay in his only other action this season got thrown out of the game for two personal foul calls. Jennings has one, said something to watch. Oklahoma and Texas, everyone on the roster, each roster got one before the game as they came out jawing at each other. This is Eric Gray, the true freshman, and just barely gets past the 41-yard line and be third down. Third down and short. So far, it's been a nine-on-seven rush drill since Jared Garantano has assumed the quarterbacking duties for Tennessee. So now you see a third down. We already saw a draw play on a third and five, a rush play on a third and five right before the half. Does Tennessee stay on the ground yet again? It's Tim Jordan. Standing to Garantano's left. And he's about a yard and a half shy, maybe two yards of a first down. That speed option. Mississippi State did a great job of getting upfield as it looks like Marquis Spencer is shaking up on that play. Junior from Greenwood, Mississippi. Three career sacks. He's been a starter all season for Bob Shoup's defense. There he is right near 
you see he just got a shot there. And it looked like Josh Palmer was coming in like he was expecting to crack it. Got back up after taking that shot from Wanye Morris. Mississippi State losing three first round draft picks this past offseason. So here he is. Now watch this. He ends up getting sandwiched between Wanye Morris and Josh Palmer. See that? Like he almost like he probably hyperextended his back. One guy pushing up high, the other guy pushing down low. Good to see him get up because he was he was not moving very much when he was face down on the turf. Regardless, it was well defended on the perimeter by Mississippi State. Denied the yardage to get to. We can get to see a pass with Jared Garantano. And now a fourth down for the Tennessee Volunteers. Meanwhile, Brian Maurer is there standing, neat, leaning against a contraption with a towel over his head as Jared Garantano is sitting. Now we're going most of the way in the first half. Four for seven, 61 yards and two interceptions. Garantano has played two drives but hasn't thrown the football yet. With 11.51 to go here in the third quarter. On a fourth and two, Tennessee will prepare to punt. Well, in some ways you have to wonder, you know, from a play calling standpoint, you got to do what's best for the team, no doubt. But if we don't see Brian Maurer back in this game, you know, what signal have you sent the backup, former starter in Garantano, a couple of scenarios where it easily could have been past situations. You kept it on the ground entirely. Is it a, a lack of trust for Garantano in there as a passer? He threw it five times versus Georgia, completed one towards the end. Nine straight runs since he's gotten in there. A couple third downs where it could have warranted putting the ball in the air. Joe Doyle, one punt today for 52 yards. On it deep to Malik Deer. Mississippi State with just three points in the first half. It came on a 51 yard Jace Grisman field goal that hit the crossbar and went in. Tommy Stevens threw a couple of interceptions in the first half. Expecting to see the true freshman Garrett Schrader to start the third. It's a beautiful punt by Doyle. And it goes into the end zone. It was a 57-yard punt. Schrader and the Bulldogs up next. The true freshman Garrett Schrader is coming off the bench again. From Charlotte, North Carolina, Charlotte Christian School. Of course, Steph Curry made that school famous, led them to back-to-back -back state titles with head coach Jason Estep. Old in Mississippi State in January, you had to think that at best he'd be the third string quarterback between behind Stevens and Keaton Thompson, but he's been playing a bunch this year. Got to get Kylan Hill going no matter who the quarterback is. He only gets a couple there. Now, one of the more viral plays in college football this year happened against K-State in the fourth quarter when Schrader went up high, now known as the Schrader Copter, is a yard shy of the first down. We visited with Mississippi State players a few weeks ago, Cinch, and they say Schrader gained all of their respect. Well, I'll say he was so out. I don't know if his kidneys appreciated it, but his teammates certainly did. He's the only SEC quarterback with 500 yards passing and 300 yards rushing on the season. Hill bottled up again, just 15 yards rushing before that play. Coach Moorhead said today he could have a Tommy Stevens at Penn State, State type H back role, but he's the starter now. He did get banged up a bit against Auburn last week. Coach Moorhead said nursing a lower body injury, but he fought hard all the way to the finish. Try to tie it up. Here's a third and six. But they're trying to communicate with the offensive front. Keep in mind. He is mobile. He can run. Bulldogs pick up the blitz, but it's dropped. Parade Green 
a yard shy of the first down. State goes three and out. Drops. And it plagued Mississippi State versus Auburn. And on a key third down early on here in the second half, Farad Green's got to come up with this catch for his quarterback. Hit him in stride. On Schamberger right there in coverage. Another punt for Tucker Day. Marquez Callaway ready to return. Day kicks it again away from Callaway. It goes out of bounds just inside the 40. It's a 37-yard punt. How about the 1998 SEC Championship game? Only time the Bulldogs have been in that game. Kevin Prentice with a house call. 83-yard punt return, and State was up going into the fourth quarter. But T. Martin found Peerless Price for a touchdown. State fumbles on the next drive, and then Martin to Cedric Wilson with just under six minutes. Gives the Vols a lead for good. They win the SEC title, and then a month later, they won the national championship. Pretty amazing comeback. An impressive one at that. Man's in the house, too. He's got a road named after him here at T. Martin. Upper helping call plays for the Vols. First throw for Garantano, and it's an underneath one to Juwan Jennings. Might have lost a couple of yards, yep. I'd say a loss of two there, second and 12. Well, the finish, Brian Cole, once again, who has been, I think, among the brightest spots of the Mississippi State defense this season. Came up with the interception in the end zone there in the second quarter, and then triggers nicely on that support. Chandler. Making his way through traffic past the 45 for a gain of nine. Third and three for there. Huge hole that time. Mississippi State run down blitz, committing the linebacker right now. Willie Gay crashing the line of scrimmage. But you got to make him right. Cam Dance was playing outside. You've already got a contained player out there. A huge hole. The Tennessee defense offensive line, the one that we talked about, reshuffled. A pretty good job in this game. Balls have thrown it twice since the first quarter. It's third and three. One on one. Caught inside the 20, down inside the 15 yard line. Biggest play of the game to the true freshman, Ramel Keaton. We got his outside release. Garantano working the left side of the field and came right back to Keaton and threw a strike. He gets it back. Let me get his head back around and Smitherman. That was something the coaches pointed out. They don't play the ball very well in the air. Does the secondary Mississippi State. Jordan, nothing doing. Jim Jordan carries. Coach Jim Chaney that said he's been Adam. very impressed by Ramel Keaton so far in his true freshman season and calls his number on a 41-yard completion. Well, I'll tell you what, he ought to be impressed too with Jared Garantano. Because that throw, that's the throw that he'd been missing. Either wouldn't shoot it or he'd underthrow it, end up in the wrong hands. You see in the red zone, they have to right this ship. First op with the opportunity here in the second half. Only one of three scoring touchdowns, one of three scoring periods. Yeah. Number yeah. 12 goes Jordan on a third down. So the question is when you have two interceptions that were thrown in the end zone, albeit by another quarterback, do you let Garantano throw here? Well, you've already shown you're willing to let him do it. There for a second, I was starting to wonder. You know, maybe it's just going to be a run only offense. You're already willing to let him take a shot downfield. Quick little pass, a little now pass. He can still pick up a first down here. And Samaglia has proven it's a gimme from here. Pass this football. It's an incomplete pass or a completion. One thing you can't have is turning it over. Run it again. Jordan, can he get the edge? Just shy of the first, down at the five. So it'll be fourth and two from there. Well, you play it safe and you just don't risk it. Jeremy Pruitt said, I've had enough of it. I'm not going to get in the red zone again. Come away empty. As you pointed out, it's not just touchdowns. It was points. So you got a starter who is no longer the starter back in the game for a reason. 
It wasn't necessarily because of the excellent decision making, but take nothing away that shot to Keaton that got the balls down here in scoring position. Mississippi State's going to have to prove they can do something on offense before Tennessee gets more aggressive in this position. Samaglia so from 22 yards makes it a 10 point game. 6 12 to go in the third quarter. Falls desperate for that second win. South Carolina and Mississippi State played just after 9-11, the first college game. That was emotional. Nick Saban won a title at LSU, left for the Dolphins, came back to Alabama. Tebow won the Heisman and two titles for the Gators. Watch it only on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Terrific documentary in its seventh part on Tuesday night. Paxton Brooks, the best in the country at kickoffs this year. Good to be in on Rocky Top today here in Neyland Stadium. A lot of discussion about the quarterbacks going into this game. But what about the SEC's leading rusher, Kylan Hill from Mississippi State? He's been taken away by that Tennessee defense. You've got to find a way to get him going. And, and that has been a hang-up for the Mississippi State offense, regardless of who is in there at quarterback. How can you get what is thought to be one of the most talented offensive players in the country rocking and rolling? You see the first four games, 138 yards per game. The difference is, once they've gotten back into conference play, it has really slowed down. Eric Schrader trying to complete his first pass. That is a catch inside the 45. Big play, Osiris Mitchell. That's another way to get going on offense. Get your ball downfield. This is under throw. Made it really hard on Osiris Mitchell to come up with this catch, but he elevates. And really, he had that in one hand. I'm going to go take a look at that. Tennessee bench. Really on the field for the previous play is a catch for a first down. This play is now under video review. Tennessee bench started going nuts, saying incomplete. It stands. It's a 34-yard completion. Give them a chance to look at this. Be back in just a moment. Call on the field overturned. It's an incomplete pass. We have Matt Austin, our ESPN rules analyst, with us back in Charlotte. Matt, what did you see? Yeah, the receiver had the ball over his head, but when he came to the ground, he still had it one-handed. When he went to the ground, it looked like he lost control. The ball hit the ground, then he gathered it back with the other hand. I think that's what the replay officials called, and I think it's a correct call making it incomplete. Thank you, sir. To see that ball clearly hitting the ground. And Ron Leatherwood overturn the call up here. So Schrader does what he does best, goes back to the ground and picks up nine. It'll be third and one. You can see Joe Moorhead after that completion being overturned. Just a deep breath on the sideline. He knows that they needed that spark. Now here's the chance off of the Schrader keeper to be able to convert this third down. They have to extend this possession, come away with points. He was hit by Bryce Thompson, but his strength and effort carries him forward for a first down. Bryce Thompson, if you just come in there and wrap up, he doesn't get this conversion. Instead, he comes in and watch 20 coming in. So he's going to shoot from the boundary corner, wrap him up. You're coming in there and just trying to go for the blow up shot. And instead, Schrader's able, big enough, a good enough runner to pick up the first down. Great defensive play call. Schrader will throw it again in the traffic. Intercepted. Nigel Warrior with another pick, giving the football back to the Vols. In the double coverage goes Schrader again. Tennessee has its third interception. Aaron Tano handing off to Tim Jordan, and Jordan gets nothing. Second out. 
you over there. You're Joe Moorhead. You're looking at this game right now, and anyone would readily think still within striking distance, right? We're sitting here talking about you need to get a conversion. Well, it's partly a function of you got to stage a drive. See if you can get Schrader established in the game. When he left the field, he was a little bit gimpy. Said he got knocked around versus Auburn. They're taking shots downfield to one to Mitchell and then the other to Williams. Now, next thing you know, Tennessee's got the ball back. Tano doesn't like what he sees, takes off, loses yardage. Tackled back at the 30 yard line, Lee Autry, senior from Albemarle, North Carolina. One of those players that's been suspended for eight games was in there. You're looking at it right now, you know, it's the tale of two quarterbacks. Backups, that is. You got one that's being incredibly aggressive, pushing it downfield. The other, you know, really, it's been nothing but handoffs, a couple of passes downfield, but bubble wrapped for Garrett Taylor. Chandler on a third and 15. Pick up four or five. CJ Morgan in there to make the tackle fourth down. Take out the interceptions. You know, both of these teams with six completions total. That's the passing game that we've seen so far. Part of it's a function. You can see Tennessee right now, based on what they're getting from Mississippi State on offense, they're clearly content. Why take a chance? Put the ball in harm's way? Don't do it. We'll just play defense until Mississippi State proves that we have to put more scoring pressure on. Joe Doyle. Hunting to Malik Deer. Malik calls for a fair catch at the 34-yard line. That's a 38-yard punt. Let's get an update on the Gamecocks and the Dogs for Peter Burns. Right now down in Athens, how about this? Ryan Holinsky, after one of the Georgia players tripped into his leg, late hit. He's flagged. He's out for the game. Did carry on Joyner, now the starter. Ryan Edwards also injured, but Gamecock still up by seven. That looks like a big hit to Holinsky. Bentley already out for the season, so carry on Joyner in for the Gamecocks. Devontae Payton takes it for a first down run as Moorhead opens up the playbook for a 12 yard run. Anything to try to jump start the offense. Get something going on the ground game. Help Payton to swing it around. Make the defense defend you from the width of the field. start offense not all 11 players were set prior to the snap five yard penalty first down second time that's happened to mississippi state in this game when they get a big play it's a gateway play they want to get up they want to see if they can run a play quickly instead they end up with another procedure penalty daryl williams clearly frustrated Hill has 17 rushing yards. He averages 119 per game. He's not in the game now with Nick Gibson next to Schrader. And Nick to the 35 yard line for one. Tennessee has limited Mississippi State to just 74 yard rushing yards today. Well, they're doing a great job of changing the line of scrimmage. What's that mean? Well, you're pushing the Mississippi State offensive front backwards. So yeah, the ball might be spotted right now on the 35, but after the snap, that front, that line of scrimmage, it gets knocked back a yard. And right now, inside, Tennessee's winning. Raider has time. Did he go down? He gets rid of the football. Yeah, Nick Gibson over there in the area. He just barely got that ball out of his hand. Looks like that knee might be down. As Aubrey Solomon would get a sack if in fact that is the call, but it, at least initially they're saying, oh, now there, there's, there's the flag. Well, 
intentional grounding on the offense. Cash was able to get outside the tackle box, but was not able to get the forward pass to the line of scrimmage. The penalty places the ball at the spot of the pass, but lost it down. Third down. Take another look at this with Matt Austin back in Charlotte watching. Matt just obviously looking to see if that left knee is down as Schrader gets rid of the football. Yeah, Taylor, from the re replay, it looked like his knee was on the ground. However, the call on the field is intentional grounding, so it doesn't make any difference. The ball's going to be in the same spot. It's still going to be the same down. So either way, uh, since it wasn't a player in the area, we got the grounding foul, so the knee being down is immaterial at this point. Thank you, Matt. Third and 21 for Mississippi State. Trader under pressure, Daryl Taylor. So Aubrey Solomon, he gets hosed out of a sack. But Daryl Taylor gets on the board, right side of your screen. He just runs the arc, ball's still in his hand. Trader tries to flush up field. Taylor does a good job of continuing to pursue and getting the sack. Gives Schrader a one-yard gain on the play. So Taylor, who... Oh, they both came up short on the sack. <laughs> Number 18, offense. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. So Taylor stays with only one sack on the season. He had eight last year. Meanwhile, Joe Moorhead's offense just can't get going. You know, after... Looking somewhat spark with the paint and fly sweep. And then just proceeding to stall out and then go backwards. Every day again. Good front. Callaway runs away from it, takes a sideways hop out of bounds at the 30. That is a 47-yard punt. More college football coming up today on SEC Network for Eastern Vandy and UNLV. And then Saturday night, 7.30 Eastern, the Razorbacks facing Kentucky in Lexington. Both teams coming off a bye week. It's the first meeting since 2012. They had that seven overtime game in 2003. Matt Jones against the late, great Jared Lorenzen. Haven't we seen a seven overtime game? There we have. <laughs> they're actually, they're honoring Jared Lorenzen today. Ty Chandler gets a view as we approach the end of the third quarter here. Bama and a and I think the Aggies have a chance there in College Station today. Well, they're going to have to play a lot better than they have. There's no doubt about that. Facing one of the more explosive offenses that you'll see in the conference right now between Alabama and LSU. Florida and LSU tonight. There's a huge story in Athens right now with Georgia and South Carolina. Into the third here, Jarrett Garantano. And the ball's trying to get their second win of the season, up 10 to the fourth. Thirteen to three at the start of the fourth quarter in Knoxville, Tennessee, with some terrific defense today. Can their offense, led by Jared Garantano, put the game away in the fourth quarter? As it's Chandler for a couple third down. Well, to say that Tennessee's become conservative, I think, would be an understatement. However, you know, in light of the way this game has unfolded. It makes sense. You've made it into the fourth quarter based on what you've seen from Mississippi State offensively. Now with Garrett Schrader in the game, it has been non-threatening. Nine pass attempts. Only two in the second half for the Vols. Here comes the third. First down. Jennings passed midfield. 15 more yards. Well, with Garantano, when he has cut it loose downfield, he's looked pretty good. Now that one, Jennings is wide open. Nearest defender was Brian Cole. 
But frankly, earlier in the season, that was not necessarily a gimme completion. He's now three for three. Look at the Bulldogs going on and off the field. Things of confusion for Coach Shoup's defense. A first down throw. Garantano too high for Jennings. Garantano got hit there as he unloaded. These pits are got there, but turned Jennings around, was running out of real estate. See, maybe going out for that knockout punch right here at midfield. With Anderson getting set there just off of the line and the handoff to Jordan. Bottled up in the backfield. Errol Thompson finishes him off. The ball came out there too. He is whistled down. It's third down. Well, that is a concern. See a concern it. too, K-Ron Calbert. Yeah. They well, said they were without Riley Locklear to start this game. Ryan Johnson getting the nod at right guard. But that's something that Mississippi State has been really effective all season. Get that football out, forcing fumbles and recovering them. Even when you're running the football, ball security is paramount. Calvert running off under his own power, getting coached as he does. He's, how about that? Never miss a coaching opportunity. Coach Pruitt getting in Calvert's ear as he hobbles off the field. Intense man. Oh, Here's Calvert. And he's saying, look, man, if you're not that injured, you can run off the field and get up, run off the field. Gonna stop the clock. Third and 13. where he made that catch a minute ago, fourth down. Put the football away. You can see it, highly conservative, sure, protect the football. Jennings is out there. Looks like he's got a shoe in one hand, a ball in the other. And hang on to the shoe. Meanwhile, can Mississippi State's deep offense do something? Just the second half, 11 plays, 21 yards. They have 142 for the game. Well, you could see Tennessee defensively seemingly turned the corner a week ago versus Georgia. They carried that performance over so far. Right here with the fair catch. 12-04 left to go in the third quarter. Lovely fall day on the banks of the Tennessee River. Here in Neyland Stadium. Would you take my call when I start to crack? Would you rescue me? Would you rescue me? Guys, last week on Thinking Out Loud, I had some explaining to do. To absolutely annihilate Florida in the swamp, and man, I was wrong. On Thinking Out Loud, every Monday night at 7 o'clock with Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears, we're talking all things SEC football. We'll talk about the big Florida game against LA as well as this Mississippi State Tennessee matchup and guys as Mississippi State gets ready to go back on offense one thing Joe Moorhead talked to us a lot about was feeling like they were able or unable to be consistent as far as quarterback play having to make those switches so far this season Schrader to Osiris Mitchell for 21 yards late flag Herschel comes in now, roughing the passer with targeting number 11 of the defense 15 yard penalty with an automatic first down. This play is now under video review. That's a massive call. Henry Toho Toho, the heart and soul of that UT defense as a true freshman. So the yardage is going to stay on here regardless. The personal foul. And you know, I'm sure we'll get our rules expert in here, Matt Austin. 
But there was good reason for that flag to come out and include targeting. Yeah, Matt. The, uh, the the player definitely came in a little bit late, and he definitely put his face mask right into the chin of that quarterback. So I think this is a classic definition of targeting. So I'm pretty sure this one will be uh, confirmed. And remember, if, if this does, if this is confirmed, Matt, Henry Toa Toa would miss the first half next week in Tuscaloosa. That is correct. Freshman from Sacramento, California, just a sensational player, five-star recruit who considered Alabama and Washington, decided to come play for Tennessee. After video review, the ruling on the field of targeting is confirmed. Number 11 is disqualified for the remainder of the game. It's been interesting to see so far in 2019, we've had 31 less enforced targeting calls than we had at this time last year. So we're seeing less and less targeting in college football, but that was the definition of it there. So in total, that's 36 yards, 21 for Mitchell, 15 on the personal foul call, and the Bulldogs have some life at their own 46. It's a big swing. I mean, you're in the center of your own goal post, and offense is not moving the ball. You give them a first down and a half with that penalty. Highland Hill, no place to go all day. Big loss there. Greg Emerson, the first one to him. Hill's frustrated because he thinks his face mask was messed with. He's got to be frustrated, period. Well, Kylan Hill's just trying to get outside. Daryl Taylor, great job setting, setting the edge. I didn't see him grasp anything. Yeah, he touched the helmet, sure. Now, at the end, I think that's probably where Kylan Hill felt like he was had his helmet ripped off. And of course he has to come out of the game. Nick Gibson in on a second and 15. Schrader into traffic again, batted away. It's third down. Let's check on what's happening in Dallas. Here's Peter Burns. Yeah, Taylor, an SEC game, or at least score, broke out in the Big 12. 10-10. How about a little trickeration? Jalen Hurts finds CeeDee Lamb, and how about the PlayStation move here? Whoop. He didn't end up scoring. 17-10, seven minutes left in the third. Old SEC quarterback, Jalen Hurts. So 17-10 Oklahoma, 17-10 South Carolina over Georgia. Meanwhile, the Bulldogs almost in desperation mode, down 10 with just over 11 minutes to go. Schrader will step up and take off, dive ahead. He will be short by a few yards as he's marked down at the 48. Goes airborne again. Talking about the Schrader copter that time. He's jumping. And, well, you got to go for it at this juncture. And you think he's, you're looking at this game. If you hadn't been watching up until now, you're going, Look, it's, this is striking distance. It's a 10-point ball game. Two possessions. Not in this one. Not the way that Mississippi State has played offensively. Bulldogs have to get to the 44. Keep in mind, what got them towards midfield was the personal foul penalty on Henry Toto. Schrader trying to find space. First down all the way down to the 36. Daryl Taylor had a hand on him, and that's what he does best. Great job by Schrader on that one. And we've seen him force some balls downfield. This time he's just running for his life. Great stiff arm to escape the pocket and pick up the yardage needed to convert. And so the gamble works right there at midfield to see if you can't get into scoring position on this possession here. We asked Joe Moorhead how he described this guy. He said insanely confident. Yeah, well, he's plays like him, that's for sure. 12 yard run for the true freshman gives the Bulldogs new life and they take advantage. Dedrick Thomas inside the 20. Off the play action. You've got a defense that gets a little bit nosy. That time the linebackers check up. Hit Thomas over the middle, a little bit behind him. 
but enough to make the completion and pierce the red zone. 9-15 to go in the game and counting. This is Mississippi State's first snap from the red zone. Highland Hill bottled up all day. It's Alante Taylor. That's a great tackle by Alante Taylor. And this is the second time we've seen him in the open field get Kylan Hill on the ground. That's what stands out about number eight when he's got the ball in his hands. And he hasn't been able to get loose much today, but he breaks tackles. That was his longest run of the day, four yards. Raider to Thomas, touchdown! <laughs> 17 yards to the senior from Memphis and the Bulldogs are back in it. What an answer by Mississippi State. Just a fantastic job, not only you gamble at midfield, but you capitalize on it. Dedrick Thomas coming up big. Once Mississippi State converted the fourth down and Garrett Schrader gutting it out on some scrambles. Fishman makes it a three point game. The drive started at their own 10 yard line. It's the longest drive of the season for Mississippi State. Culminating with the touchdown pass to Dedrick Thomas. The eighth catch of his career in the end zone, we got a football game on Rocky Top. Balls have been in control of this game all the way. But Mississippi State's touchdown makes you wonder how they'll play up three. Garrett Schrader, 17-yard touchdown pass to Dedrick Thomas been growing that beard since birth, evidently. <laughs> That's right. True freshman. That's at least a redshirt junior's beard. Tennessee has only scored two touchdowns in the second half as a team this year. Nice kick from the five-yard line. And it's Chandler with a flag down. He's going to be packed up to start this drive. Holding 38 of the receiving team during the return. Penalty will be uh, half the distance to the goal line. At the end of the return, first down. Someone Page with the penalty. Let's go back to the studio for an update in Peter Burns. All right, thank you, Taylor. Ta chaos continues down between the hedges. First play of the fourth quarter, Jake from fumbles. South Carolina picks it up 13 minutes ago. And how about Ryan Holinsky? Injured, but celebrating. Bench to carry on Joiner in instead for the Gamecocks here. Off the bench, it's Jared Garantano handing off to Ty Chandler, and he's ahead to the 15 yard line. Both starting quarterbacks have been benched in this game. First, it was Brian Maurer who got banged up towards the end of the first half. Garantano has made 17 career starts, came in. And for Mississippi State, Tommy Stevens went to the bench. Garrett Schrader in relief. There's Maurer watching on a second and four. Chandler, first down. Taking Mississippi State white shirts to the 30-yard line. This tackle showing up for Mississippi State. Right up the middle. And you've got defenders there that can make the play and don't. Chandler running through arm tackles at the line of scrimmage, and that's something that has plagued Mississippi State's defense the most in the conference. 12 and a half missed tackles a game. 
That's a ton. And that one showed up big because that was the worst starting field position for Tennessee here in this half. And right when you wanted to pin them deep. This is Jordan in for Chandler and he gets about seven. So Bob Shoup, the former defensive coordinator at Tennessee, who was here for two years, is now the DC at Mississippi State in his second season in Starkville. He was gashed by Auburn. He says we've had alignment issues. The effort's been fine, but just a lot of inexperience rearing its ugly head. He does still continue to have ties to Tennessee. Son Jay is on the team for Tennessee. The defensive back is not playing today, but is wearing his uniform on the sideline. This is Jordan with a first down run up to the 49 yard line. It's a pickup of 12, and there's Jay Shoot pulling against Dad today. Yeah, they had to kind of put him on an island this week. Made sense. Wasn't it practice during the week? Conflict of interest, blood sticker and water, all that business. Jay Shoup wouldn't have done anything to sell out his teammates, but still it made sense for him to be more isolated, but not on game day. He's on this football team. He's wearing his orange opposite his dad's maroon. At that time, bad second level fit from Jaquarius Landrews on the perimeter run. His safety spot. Great job by Tim Jordan. Jordan sheds the tackle and gets ahead to the 49 yard line. It's a pickup of a couple as Kobe Jones couldn't make a, a tackle. And this clock is running and running. Yeah. And Tennessee's not going to throw it unless Mississippi State makes it. They've thrown it five times here in the second half 22 runs. And right now, Mississippi State, you know, the big run to crank open this possession and to get out from your half of the football field. Now all of a sudden, boom, balls at the 50-yard line, and Mississippi State let them out of a hole defensively. Jordan gets to the 47, so it's gonna be third and about six from there, just over the four-minute mark by the time Tennessee snaps this football. Chandler's run it 16 times for 63 yards. Jordan 18 times for 60 yards. This two-headed monster in the backfield. And as much as it is about the yardage, the production, obviously you gotta keep the possessions and move the sticks. But it's the clock, as you pointed out, Taylor. It's a three-point game. Well, you have to think right here, Garantana, we just got done talking about it. He's four or five for 58 yards here in the second half. Tennessee saw that play clock running down and they call timeout on this huge play in a three point game. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. 120 squares in each end zone, 60 white, 60 orange. Painted each Thursday and Friday. White squares on Thursday, orange squares on Friday. For five by five and approximately 40 gallons of paint to both the end zones. That started with Doug Dickey back in 1964. Juwan Jennings and Marquez Callaway. That's Jennings in motion. Number 15. Montano looking that way. In trouble underneath throw. Jordan, first down. How about Garantano surveying the whole field and converting? He was selling it. He sent Jawan Jennings over there to that side. Where's everybody expecting to throw it? And he comes back to Tim Jordan. Opposite side of the field, the entire defense tilts that way towards Jennings. It's him right over the hands and into Tim Jordan. He converted seven third downs today. Tennessee has all of them passing. That was the biggest one with the clock moving near the 3.30 mark. Jordan, Kobe Jones gives him a bear hug. It'll be second down. Mississippi State's going to have to start thinking about yeah. timeouts. Meanwhile, Garantano, who's been told he cares too much. He doesn't get rid of the play 
that just happened. He keeps thinking about it. Trey Smith, his old roommate, the left guard, said that he, he constantly told Jarrett, forget about it, move on. He did on that third down conversion. So just milk that clock down. Use all the play clock you can. Bird. First down. Touchdown. First guy to greet Brian Maurer, or to Garantano on the field rather, was Brian Maurer. Chris Winky gets a hug. And Samaglia's extra point is good. That's the longest drive of the season, 91 yards. And that guy, Tyler Bird, didn't have a catch before today. He's had a couple of game winners in his career. This one might be one, too. It's our five-star play of the day presented by Yellowwood. Jared Garantano to Tyler Bird. Catch and run to the checkerboards. Finally let Garantano open it up, huh? He's thrown it some. And he's count, made him count when he has. Tennessee needing to answer. Mississippi State had narrowed the lead with their own scoring drive. Tennessee comes right back. The long scoring drive of their own put 10 points between they and Mississippi State Bulldogs. That's been the margin for most of the game. All kinds of drama happening around us in college football. For an update, let's go back to Peter Burns. Indeed, it is drama. This is updates for Alyssa Lang, who's nervous right now because 15 straight wins versus SEC East opponents might be in jeopardy for the Bulldogs. Fromm with his second pick. Stitch, they've been trying to open it up that offense. Not looking good today for Georgia. Wow. How are we oh, feeling man. down there on the field, Alyssa? I'm nervous, y'all. I'm real nervous. Uh, I'm focused on the game in front of me, though, and I'm only checking for updates when the glorious voice of Peter Burns <laughs> is on the air. Israel Mukwamu with two picks between the hedges today. Garrett Schrader's got 230 left in the game. This guy is all hard. First down run for 14. See, we talked about him. He was nicked up last week, or last time out versus Auburn. He's had some key scrambles, did so on their scoring drive. Schrader under pressure. Ball's fumbled but recovered by the Bulldogs. It was Daryl Taylor coming around the edge. Daryl Williams recovered the football. Got his hand on the ball. Right on his upfield hand of Garrett Schrader. Ball came out, and you're right, Daryl Williams with the heads up play. to the 45-yard line. Clock still running unless Mississippi State starts using those timeouts. Had to. Yep. 143 left. Joe Moorhead needs a miracle. It's your run. Joe Moorhead in his second season as the head coach of the Bulldogs, 11-7 coming in. But he's been listening to a bunch of people talking about how he's supposed to take the program to the next level after Dan Mullen established the standard. He said, I got to stop worrying about what Bob from Boca Chitta, Mississippi, thinks. I got to worry about what my own team thinks. 145 to go in the fourth quarter. This team's down 10. First down throw to Osiris Mitchell. The extra effort inside the 40. Well, Cyrus Mitchell's been a battler in this game. 
had a completion overturned. Had a, it was a big explosive play, turned the other direction, and now a big catch over the middle. And Mississippi State in hurry up. Schrader, first down inside the 30. Clock stops momentarily with 123 left. He doesn't know how to slide. He's going to dive forward every single time. That time just enough to get a fresh set of downs and on the outskirts of another red zone possession. To the end zone, and it's batted away. That's Warrior. Bryce Thompson had fallen down. Nigel Warrior comes over from his safety position, makes a great play to knock that ball away. Schrader saw it. Thompson goes down to the ground, thought he could find Osiris Mitchell again, and instead Nigel Warrior able to come over once again, saw him do it earlier. inside the 15. See, backs turn to the line of scrimmage. Huge voids in the defense. The third time where Schrader has been able to scramble up and get another first. Snap it with 50 seconds left. Can't take a sack, and he does. Yvonne Bennett. Biscuits boy with the sack. 44 seconds left, and Mississippi State has to call another timeout. It looked like there was confusion to the left side of the formation. Osiris Mitchell didn't even release. So there's really only one receiver downfield. So you have to wonder what ended up happening. Thank you. He just got unloaded. You can see he went unloaded, he reloads, and then eats it. Negative yardage play. Clock continues to run. You're forced to take another timeout. Six sacks, nine tackles for loss for a Tennessee defense that has struggled to generate either coming into this game. Son of one of the greatest Alabama players ever, Cornelius Bennett, cheering for Big Orange today. Second and 17. They do tack on a second. And that's Daryl Middleton. Well, you had to think there was a chance for a QB draw. And what Tennessee did with their defensive front was they stunned it. The two interior defensive linemen, one was just standing up. And Daryl Middleton comes across, and what looked like a running lane vanished. And as you mentioned, Schrader, as soon as he started to break up field, it was right into the belly of Daryl Middleton. 310 pound belly at that. Mississippi State calling timeouts on each of the last two plays. Only 40 seconds to go in the game and have the ball at the Tennessee 25 yard line on the third and 22. You still pick up a first, that's the only other time. Other than an incompletion, it's going to stop the clock. Mississippi State's burned their final timeout. Trader. Lasso down by Daniel Batuli. Clock will run on this fourth down at the 19-yard line. Oh, and they're going to rush on the field. Christman's going to attempt a field goal. Yeah, fireball. And Tennessee is going to call timeout with 20 seconds to go. And Mississippi State needs two scores, so they're using the percentages set. Let's make it a one-possession game as quickly as we can. Schrader on that scramble left the pocket. 
You've got to unload the football, stop the clock again. He gets tackled. You see, 39 seconds, 38, 37. Now watch, he gets scrambled out here. He goes to the ground. The clock ticks down for 30 seconds and then stops. And then starts back up again. But it paused for more than a beat there. It's a 36 yard attempt for Chrisman who connected with his career long earlier in the game. And the glimmer of hope ends as it's wide left. Tennessee was 1-13 against the SEC West since 2010. They beat Auburn last year to end that streak. And now they're going to beat a West team again. Falls limit Mississippi State to 267 total yards. Sacking quarterbacks six times. And Kylan Hill had 13 yards rushing. And Jarrett Garantano gets to celebrate with his teammates. How about that storyline? You open the game, Ryan Maurer, the true freshman, he's the answer. He played okay, had a couple of red zone, end zone turnovers. That's what kept the game close. First guy on the field to pat him on the belly was Brian Maurer. Alyssa Langs with the winning coach, Jeremy Pruitt. Coach, what did you think about the way your defense played today to get this win? Played hard, we got some turnovers. Unfortunately, we lost a couple of players in this game, uh, but the guys that we put in, they were resilient, they found a way, uh, and, and our offense done a nice job there, got the ball with eight minutes to go, put a great drive together and scored there at the end. Is there an update on Brian Maurer? You know, he, he's he's got to go through the protocol for concussion. So. What did you think about the way Garantano was able to come in and finish it? Well, he managed the offense. We ran the ball some there and, and made a good play there on the RPO, and Tyler Bird made a great run. Thank you, Coach. 20 to 10, Jeremy Pruitt's team with its second win, Jarrett Garantano. All smiles after being through so much in the last few weeks. Mississippi State falls to three and three on the season. Be back with more from Knoxville. But first, let's go to our SEC Network studios. Peter Burns, Chris Doring, and Gene Chiswick. One good win for a team in Tennessee. That's the Vols. Another one getting ready to be in action here momentarily. Vanderbilt football going to be taking on UNLV. But how about those Vols? 20-10.